I am so excited to be here with chef and author Hugh Atchison. Thank you so much for well, being thanks. here. Thanks. Good to be here. And so today we're going to talk about your new book, The Broad Fork, which is sort of a gift to people who like vegetables but need to understand them seasonally. So tell me a little bit about this book. And this one's just my reaction to, we get a CSA box every week. Mm -hmm. And when we're going to pick up the CSA box, I get countless questions as the local chef about things like, what do I do with kohlrabi? Right. How do I use all what these cucumbers? What is kohlrabi? Why is there so much lettuce in my box? <laughs> right. So it's just a reaction to all that and giving four recipes pretty much for every vegetable that you'd see in a CSA box over the course of a year and making you try new things, getting you out of your sort of narrow focus on cooking, because we all do the same thing day right. after day. And is it important to say, like, you know, these are the things that are actually in season, rather than like, you may want to eat a tomato in December, but it's probably not the best thing you can find. Yeah, I mean, I think that I'm the son of an economist, and when you shop within the seasons and your locality, you're doing multitude of things. You're buying at the peak of the availability and the peak of its right. quality, so it's at its lowest price right. point. You are supporting your local economy, you're just getting integrated into your local economy, and you're getting integrated into your community, which I think is really cool. So you're gonna make us a recipe, but kind of a variation yep. on a recipe today. What are we making? So we're gonna make a base risotto, uh, just with leeks, and then I'm gonna finish one with a puree of spring onion tops, finish, and uh, some beautiful roasted spring onions. Another one, I'm gonna make a ramp risotto uh, with mushrooms in it. And another one, I'm going to do a very simple uh, carrot uh, risotto. So yeah. three different risottos, all made with the same base, though. So it's just a stylistically looking at the the possibilities that you have when you learn one single technique. Great. So will you show us the steps to all of your risottos? Let's do it. Okay. So we're making just a risotto base, and we're going to start with an allium. This is a leek, but you could use a regular onion. You could use shallots. So we're going to get that down in there. We're looking to sweat it out and looking to exude as much natural sugar uh, that's in there as possible. So that's gonna just sweat down just a little bit for about a minute and a half. And then we're gonna add our rice with our Borio rice. Uh, you could use carnaroli. It's another type of short grain Italian rice. And just lightly toast that off, making sure that every kernel is pretty much glistening with just a little bit of oil. That's gonna release a little bit of its starch and aid in that creaminess that we're trying to encourage in risotto. Risotto takes on average about 17 to 20 minutes from start to finish, so it's not really, uh, it's not that dish that everybody's like, oh, you have to stir it all the time. You work out for probably a lot longer than that, so 17 minutes of stirring like this is probably not too hard, so you can do it. And I'm on medium heat right now, and again, bumping up just a little bit. Over here, I've got a stock, uh, which is just keeping warm, because as we introduce the stock slowly but surely to the risotto base to cook, I just want to make sure that it's warm so the risotto doesn't have to come back up to temperature every time. Now this is chicken stock, uh, but you could use vegetable stock or you can make a nice onion broth or something like that. So at this point you could deglaze with some white wine if you like that in your risottos. I'm not really a big fan, so I'm just going to keep it pretty much straight up. So the stock starts to go in. We are stirring pretty consistently. And again, it's not that much stock. It's just enough to really moisten all of it and have it just be a little bit puddly. And then we're just gonna stir through and you see all the liquid is starting to cloud up and that's all the uh, amazing amount of starch that's in the risotto coming and exuding from each grain. So I'm gonna do three different types of risottos and I've got some uh, prep done off to the side. This is a puree of spring onion tops. So I just took spring onion tops, branched them in water, and pureed it with a little bit of butter and a little bit of ice. This is a puree of carrots. Uh, so I just cooked those in a little bit of butter and cream and water. And then I've got uh, Parmesan cheese. Over here I've got roasted onions. So these are just spring onions that I pan roasted for a while. This is kind of a low to medium heat type of scenario. Uh, and then I've got some ramps tops that we'll toss into the ramp version as well. So this and a little bit of the mushrooms go into it and then more mushrooms will garnish on top. The 17 to 20 minutes, should you just kind of know when risotto's uh, done. I'm gonna start adding a little bit of salt to this and totally separately, I'm gonna drizzle a little bit of olive oil and a little bit of red wine vinegar on my, on my uh, sweet onions. The vinegar and the sweet onions are just gonna coalesce together really nicely and balance each other out. So again, we're on sort of medium, medium high heat right now. So it's been about 15 minutes and the risotto is just closing in on it's time to be done. And it's still a consistency that's relatively loose. It's still going to be coming together and still cooking as we continue to do what we're doing. 
But what we're going to do is just soften it up, maybe just a touch more than you think it needs to be. And then we're going to divide it into these three pots over here. Before I do that, I'm going to add just a little bit of cheese and a little bit of butter. When I say a little bit, I mean a lot. So a butter is going to be about two tablespoons. I started with about one tablespoon, so it's got three. Okay, so now we're going to separate and we're just sharing amongst the three pots. So now I'm going to take my first risotto. I'm going to finish with some carrot puree. And then we're going to take uh, some of this puree of spring onion top and get that in there, a copious amount to make a nice chlorophyll green. And then we are going to take our ramp tops, which are these, and we're going to fold that into our last one and wilt those really directly into our risotto base. And you'll see how the consistency has changed once we get into those presentation bowls over here. The mushrooms I've got, I'm going to get half of them in with the ramps and half of them are going to go on the top. And then the spring onions, I'm going to get that into my risotto and then we'll garnish with more on top. So now we can begin to think about assembling. This is our mushroom. And again, we can finish with a little bit of extra ramp green on the top. So there's one. Then we've got our um, spring onion risotto, which is really br the bright green one. So this has those cut roasted spring onions in it. And then spring onion that I'm gonna just garnish with as well is that. And then last but not least, I've got the carrot risotto. So there we go. So three di different risottos using the exact same technique, really straightforward, really honest cooking. And it's a skill set that if you learn how to do one, you know how to do all three. And it's all from my new book called The Broad Fork.